Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ at the Megs Point Nature Center. Today's program is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to do this one. Today we're going to be doing a Native American game. And this particular Native game you can do at home. It's really quite simple. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can participate in the game. Now, you do need other people. Obviously, it's a game, so you want to have other people involved. Uh, so each one of the people that are participating need to do what I am about to do. So what we're going to do are collect the game pieces. Now I'm going to flip the camera so that we can you can see what I am looking at. And we're going to start looking for things that you can use to play the game. Now the object is that you need each person needs to find the same objects. For example, if you've got three people playing, so you can see on our gravel path here, you're going to need three stones that are similar. Just similar enough that you can say, okay, three gray stones. Really quite simple. So we've got three gray stones. Again, each person needs one of each of the items that you're selecting. So you can, you can make a game of finding the pieces. For example, let's say one person finds a piece of wood or a small stick. You can say, okay, everybody else needs to find a piece of wood or a small stick. Okay, so let's go around and see what other things we can collect. So I want to thank you guys as you tune in. Some of you are putting in the towns that you're coming from. I really appreciate that. I see my mom is in from Uncasville. Okay, so we've got some straw or grass. So again, you need three pieces. And actually, these pieces are really long. Probably too long to do this game comfortably. So what we're going to do is we're going to break them into three pretty equal sizes. Okay, so now we have three sticks. Let me put those in my pocket, and we're going to move along and see what other things we can find. Now, I have an advantage. I could go out on the beach and get some shells and things, which is really fun to use in the game. And right here, we have some shells that we've put here from the garden. So again, we need three. These are all slipper snails. So these are identical snails. And we did a program on slipper snails. If anyone's interested in learning more about snipper, slipper snails, you can visit megspointnaturecenter.org's virtual learning center or go to the Megs Point Nature Center YouTube channel and uh, see our videos about Slipper snails. It's much less windy over on this side. All right, so remember we picked up a, a piece of wood. So now I've got two more pieces of wood. So now we've got three pieces of wood. That is actually probably enough different things to play the game. I'm going to walk through the garden here. Coming up, we will be doing a program on the garden. I actually might end up doing a couple. Uh, there are several different gardens here at Hammonasset, and they're sectioned off. So we've got a shade garden, a rain garden. We'll do a whole program on that coming up. Uh, here we go. Pine cones. So we'll collect three pine cones. So this is a great backyard game. It can also be done inside can be done on a rainy day in your house. And I will show you how to do that uh, when I show you how to play the game. All right, so over here, this is where we're going to set up to play our game. Let me just check and see if I've missed any comments. Hello, Kristen. Kristen does our uh, backyard, great backyard pursuit, which is winding down, or it may 
maybe over. I don't even know what week we're on in that. I always lose track. Even when we do great park pursuit, I always lose track of which week we're in in the great park pursuit. All right, so we'll set this up. Let's put it over this way so you guys don't have to see all those cars driving by. Now, I'm going to show you how the Native Americans did the game, and then we'll show you how you can do the game. So we've got our pieces. We've got sticks. We've got pine cones. We've got chunks of wood. And we've got stones. And... Everybody always wonders why I wear a vest. It's because the pockets are always full of stuff. So my mom's tuning in. She used to complain about me having things in my pockets when I was a kid. She didn't really like it. I don't blame her because some of the things were like frogs and toads. And I think once there was a snake. So that's a whole nother story. So what you would do is you would divide up. So each person playing, I'm going to pretend like I have three people playing this game with me. I know you guys are great at pretend. You all have good imaginations. So, each person has the same items. And what you are going to do is you're going to cover up the items like so. Now, the Native Americans would have used a pelt like this. You probably don't have one, but... I'll show you how to do it differently next time. Okay. Now, the other people are waiting for you to do this. You're going to uncover and let them look. They're not allowed to touch their pieces of the game until you cover it back up. So I'm going to say five seconds. So I will uncover it for one, two, three, four, five. They are looking at the items here trying to memorize these items, and then I cover it back up. Now they will try and place their items as closely as possible to these items. Once they are done and they think they've got it as close as you can, you uncover it, and the person that has their items the most closely matched is the winner. So if you look here, I put the shell on my left, the stone on my right, the pine cone with both sticks on top. That's what you would tr want to try and duplicate if you were playing the game. The person that comes the closest is the winner of the game, and they get to lead it the next time. Or you just take turns leading the game. So it's really pretty simple. You can pick up all these things that you just find in your backyard. Now, I mentioned if you... If it's a rainy day and you want to do this in your house, it's really simple to do that too. First of all, you don't need a skin or a pelt. All you need is a towel. Great substitute. And then you're going to go around your house and look for things. But you need to find, again, enough things for each person. So I found a ruler, a quarter, a spoon, and a pencil. So I would need three of each of these and then three people could play this game. You would position it the same way. You would lay your items out. You would cover it up with the towel. Well, you cover it up first, then lay your items out, uncover it for a few seconds, let people try and memorize, and then you cover it back up. Okay? So this is a very simple game, but it's one that Native Americans used, and it helped train their children. It helped practice memorization. And that's something that is really important, especially to a Native American. They would have been hunter-gatherers, so they would need to memorize where food items are, where a great place to find mushrooms, or where a good place to hunt deer. This helps you memorize. This could also help you memorize how to do a particular task. So if you were learning how to skin an uh, animal, watching someone do it and then remembering how they did it, this helps that memory. So from a small age, if you started doing this, you would learn very quickly. All it takes is a quick glance and you can remember something and use that in the future. Okay, so do we have any questions?
about this Native American game. This is a Native American game. Um, as far as I know, it was played by the Algonquins and the Iroquois, so it was a New England game. Uh, but like a lot of the Native American uh, games and stories, when you get out of the region, they probably still played the game. There would just be a, a var variation to it. But you would still probably be able to recognize the game if you st saw it somewhere else. All right. I'm not seeing any questions. I hope everyone is enjoying these programs. I, again, I'm going to be going on vacation next week. Just a few days, I'll be back doing these programs on Friday. But during the week next week, I will be doing programs from New Hampshire. That's where I'm going. So I'll continue to do the programs from New Hampshire. The time is going to be whenever I can do a program. So please just pay attention to your Facebook feeds. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, ranger.russ on Instagram, I will try and put up ahead of time so that you can uh, see the program live and then we can get some questions and comments. Again, it's New Hampshire. I'm not sure how the reception's going to be up there, so, but hopefully I'll do some live programs. What's the name of this game? So we always just called it the Native American Memorization Game or the Memory Game. Um, I'm sure that there, the tribes had other names for it but that's the name that we've used. This game has been played here at the uh, Meg's Point since before I came here. So this game was passed down to me from other Nature Center staff. Great game, thanks for sharing. We'll play something similar with Cub Scouts, yeah. Uh, Cub Scouts, I've noticed, I've done lots of programs with Cub Scouts. They've adopted a lot of Native American games. Most of them they play just like the Native Americans did, but they have several games um, that are just a little bit different. And in looking at the old uh, Cub Scout and, and scouting uh, pamphlets and books from years ago, back when I was a scout, um, it looks like they, did, they got the games from the Native Americans. So that's really cool that they're passing down uh, those traditions. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions or comments. Let's do a quick reminder that if you visit MegsPointNatureCenter.org's Virtual Learning Center, you will be able to connect to Dinosaur State Park, Kellogg Environmental Center, and the Goodwin Conservation Center, and the Great Backyard Pursuit, No Child Left Inside, all the programs that are put on through that system as well. You can see activities and events that you can do from your homes. Uh, great Backyard Pursuit has a great one that I still, I want to do it uh, here. And it's um, art from nature. So going around and either taking pictures or drawing pictures of things that you see uh, that look artistic in your backyard. I really have an advantage if I'm doing it here at Hammonasset because I say every view from Hammonasset is a photo opportunity. So I will be putting up some pictures and... Um, of things that I see as artistic here at Ham and Asset. All right, so I'm gonna sign off for now. You can tune in tomorrow at two o'clock and then again tomorrow at 11. Uh, at 11 o'clock, we'll be doing a special program. I'm gonna be traveling uh, again to, I think we'll go to another state forest. I'm having a lot of fun at the state forests. There's something that people sort of overlook as a place to visit. There are lots of resources within the state park and forest system. So I'm really trying to promote people visiting our state forest. So we'll be doing that tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock. Until then, this is Ranger Russ signing off from the Meg's Point Nature Center.